In the mid-2000s, single-core CPUs were at their highest peak. You had very fast Pentium 4s and even AMD Athlon 64 CPUs on the market. The new revolution was to be the dual-core processor. AMD had already beat Intel to the punch with the Athlon 64 X2, which meant that it had two CPU cores on a single die. And it was an excellent CPU for the time, even beating out Intel's own dual-core offerings which, to put it lightly, were a bit of a literal room heater from the start. Today, we're going to do some light gaming-ish on what are possibly two potential room heaters that are otherwise ineffective at doing basically anything else. Here we have the Gateway GT4024 against the Dell Optiplex GX620, both of which equipped with Pentium D processors, one of which is the slowest, one of which is the fastest. So the games that I'm going to be testing are fairly familiar for those who've been watching some of my gaming videos for a little while now, so I'm not going to bother introducing them because, well, let's just face it, there's no point in doing that. Mainly what I wanted to talk about today is bottlenecking. So you know how back in the day people were always clamoring about getting those fancy high definition graphics and you know they had really crappy cpus or whatever so basically the cpu in this case with these two systems is going to be the bottleneck for the most part with some exceptions with the gx620 where the gpu becomes the bottleneck so the gpu in question is going to be a radeon hd 8490 with one gig of ddr3 video memory it's a display adapter but it's one that is new enough that it works on both systems this thing is a really quirky computer and that a lot of the GPUs I tried just wouldn't work because this motherboard is so finicky and it's so crappy that it only works with the HD 8490 as far as I can see. It didn't have anything that was newer that would actually work with it, so that really kind of sucked. So I had to use that GPU across both systems, which is fine because the HD 8490 allowed the Pentium D CPU to reach its maximum potential. When you're using a display adapter from like 2012, 2013, and it's allowing a CPU from 2005 to reach its maximum potential, a display adapter, not a gaming card, a display adapter, you know you're in for a dumpster fire, or in this case, an actual room heater. The Pentium D was never a good CPU, even from the start, and even Intel admitted that it was a bit of a hack job. Essentially what the Pentium D is, for those who don't know, and it really doesn't need any introduction to this, the Pentium D was effectively two Pentium 4 dies, or cores, that are just put together with duct tape and basically called a day as far as a lazy dual-core processor. Yes, technically it is a dual-core processor in the loosest of terms. It has two cores and two threads, and it's a true dual-core unlike the hyper-threading of a Pentium 4, for example. The only problem is that they ran hot and they used a lot of power. I mean, in this case, the Pentium D960 in this particular Dell uses 130 watts, just the CPU alone. That's its TDP number. This one, I think, has a 95 watt TDP. So these were not very power efficient computers. And as such, you know, these things are known for running hot, loud, and using a lot of power and really not even performing all that great, even back in the day. And this was a clear win for AMD with its Athlon 64 X2 on socket 939. Of course, Intel caught back up in 2006 with the Core 2 Duo line, and the Conroe chips were actually pretty well to keep up on pace with Athlon 64 X2 CPUs from the time period. And so began the CPU wars, which ultimately ended in Intel's favor with the Core 2 line up until 2017 when Intel stopped innovating and AMD caught up with Ryzen. And that's a story for another time, probably by somebody else because I'm not too technically inclined to talk about this sort of stuff. But I digress, I just felt like saying that. Now the testing today is kind of a bit crippled because of the fact that I only was allowed to use 2 gigabytes of RAM. This gateway, like I mentioned, with a piece of crap motherboard that only worked with my HD8490 display adapter, well, the motherboard's also limited to 2 gigabytes of RAM at maximum, even though it's shipped brand new with a Pentium D processor, which ultimately you would think would allow the system to support up to 4 gigabytes of RAM. But no, the motherboard is capped at 2 gigs, so that meant running Windows 7 was a bit of a nightmare because of 2 gigs of RAM.
And I did install all the updates because while these things were online, I didn't want them to cause security vulnerabilities on my network. So you kind of have to pay what you get. So this video had been very long in the making because of this. And unfortunately, that meant the 960 system had to be downgraded from 4 gigs to 2 gigs of RAM. I had to make it even because, well, testing sakes. So that system is going to go back to having 4 gigs of RAM after I'm done. This thing, well, this might be the last time you'll see it on my channel because I'm probably going to put it for sale and get rid of it because the motherboard is just too limiting. So without further ado, let my ugly mug introduce you to the terrible gaming performance of two Pentium D based computers. Why do I put myself through this? So let's kick things off with the obligatory golf with your friends sequence, which actually surprisingly runs okay on these not great but okay for a pentium d so keep that in perspective now i'm not going to go too crazy with the benchmark results throughout the video but i'm mainly going to talk about like you know cpu bottlenecking and stuff between the cpus so here are the benchmark figures on screen obviously the pentium d960 system won this battle and had a little less stutter although it was still stuttery in some busier areas of the map which in this case was candy land at 720p low now the Pentium D960 actually seems to have a little bit more breathing room on this map for a slightly better GPU, which honestly surprises me given how old and weak this processor is and how much actual electricity that it uses. Like I mentioned earlier, 130 watts TDP, just the CPU, which is insane. You almost never see that anymore. But uh, yeah. The Pentium D805 at this sequence was at 100% usage, whereas you can see right now the Pentium D960 isn't fully being utilized. You normally don't want your CPU to be fully utilized because then that will cause stutters and or will prevent your graphics card from reaching its maximum potential, which is what gives you the better looking visuals in your video games. Left 4 Dead 2 is a perfect example of the Pentium D bottlenecking under pressure. Now, I'll show the results later because they're a bit kind of sort of eh, but I'll get to my point here real shortly. See how the visuals are just stuttering all over the screen and how the processor in this case is bottlenecking the graphics card? That's the problem that comes with a weak CPU with a really okay, I guess, graphics card that can overpower the CPU. Now, the results that you're about to see are eh. And I mean that literally because they're both pretty awful, especially in the stutter department, like you can kind of sort of see on the screen recording in areas. Yeah, you might argue saying that, oh yeah, the reason why it's stuttering is because it's on high. Well, no, let me explain my case here. So in the case of a CPU bottleneck where the processor itself is too weak to run the actual game itself, it's not going to fix itself by running the game at lower settings especially if the GPU is a lot more powerful than the CPU can provide, which in this case is totally true with this game, it doesn't matter what graphics settings you use, the game itself is still going to stutter and run like crap anyways because the CPU just can't keep up with the actual game going on. So there's no sense in running the game at lower settings if the CPU is already being bottlenecked because by doing that you're going to be trying to have the GPU shove more frames down the CPU to process, which in turn is just going to make the bottleneck even worse. So to reduce the bottleneck, you typically would run the GPU at a higher graphics setting in order to take some of the load off of the processor. And in some cases, actually running games at higher settings will take the load off of a weaker or older CPU and will actually make the game sometimes run better. So while this isn't always the case, it's generally speaking the thing that you would do to help improve performance on a gaming computer, especially one that has more dated components in it, is to just run the game with a better GPU or higher settings to take some of the load off of the CPU by having it process less frames and effects. Well, maybe not so much the effects, but have it process less frames so it can actually have more CPU cycle, you know, breathing room to actually run the game code. I don't know. That's just my take on the matter. I'm sure you could probably look up more detailed information on CPU bottlenecking online, and it'll give you a better explanation of the whole process topic, whatever else you want to call it. Next game. Here I got another Valve title, Portal 2, one that's more optimized than Lead for Dead 2, although to be fair, this game has a lot less going on in the early game, which is what I used for testing CPU bottlenecking. Now for this test, I used 1600 by 900 resolution with all the in-game settings basically set to medium, 
No anti-aliasing, of course, because that would just tax both chips pretty hard, being the CPU and the GPU. I wanted to really test for bottlenecking with the processor. The Pentium D805 in this scene was at 100% usage the whole time. It was very obvious that it was a lot weaker, and the GPU was being choked by the 805. Whereas the Pentium D960, as you can tell, is easily able to run this, and while yes, the CPU usage is rather high, it's not bottlenecking the graphics card in any way. And so it's actually able to put strain on the GPU to which it's now being the bottleneck instead of the CPU. So Portal 2 ran well on both, at least 60 frames per second with both systems. Although again, the Pentium D960 exhibited less stutter in the long run throughout the same exact opening sequence. Tomb Raider 2013's benchmark test was another push for the Pentium D805, and it exhibited a lot of stutter, or at least in the benchmark results, it sure did. The Pentium D960 was no stranger to being utilized 100%, especially towards the middle part of the test, but it was also the HD8490 that was being used to its maximum potential, and yep, there it is. So, the benchmark results between both computers were eh, at best. This was at 720p low, which is a realistic resolution that you would probably want to use. Any lower in the game really starts to look like potato quality. Admittedly, it would allow the CPUs to probably do a little bit better, at least in the case of the 960, maybe it might, but that would just only inhibit more stutter. So, again, take it for what you will. You know, you can try lowering the graphics settings, but at the end of the day, you can't make a slow CPU that can't even keep up with the game to begin with go any faster by lowering the graphics settings in-game. It just doesn't work that way. I have one more example of CPU bottlenecking at its finest here with the original grid, running at 1600 by 900 with the in-game ultra-low preset, which means basically everything as low as it can go. And this is my point. It doesn't matter what the graphics settings of the game are. If the CPU can't even keep up with the game to begin with, it won't matter what graphics settings you choose, the game is still going to struggle. And in this case, also the GPU struggled a little bit, but more the CPU than the GPU. Both processors got fully utilized in this game. It didn't matter at one point. The CPU was just the bottleneck in both scenarios. With the same race, same settings, same everything, obviously, except the computers being different. And it was very, very clear that the Pentium D805 struggled with this game, getting a heck of a lot less on average, frame rate wise, than the Pentium D960 based system. Which is not surprising, but it's really shocking when you show this and it's like, wow, the CPU really sucks. And it does. And this was the problem with the Pentium D. You know, for the same money, if not sometimes less money, you could get a much higher performing AMD processor which would either get the same results if not better in some cases with the same games at the same settings with the same graphics card. It's crazy to think that, but that's just the kind of problem that you run into with the Pen AMD is that they just don't perform as efficiently as they should, just from their design aspect alone. This game really does push these CPUs to their limit and it's very clear which one, well admittedly yeah, comes out ahead, but really kind of shows that, you know, the Pentium D just wasn't meant for the future. It really wasn't future-proofed at all. So at the end of the day, it's pretty clear you should not game with a Pentium D. I tried to get the best results that I possibly could, and they look impressive for a video, but not for today's standards. And it also doesn't help that these are lacking instruction sets, memory capabilities and compatibilities, and of course, most of the systems you'll find with a Pentium D are BTX which means your expansion options are very limited. So, yeah, if it wasn't evident enough by the fact that the, C that the CPU performance is awful, like very awful, um, yeah, it, this should obviously tell you. So, you know, if you're looking at vintage machines and you find a Pentium D and you're looking for something to run Windows XP on, okay, fine, that's fair enough. I would still recommend a Core 2 Duo for that, but fine, fair enough, your Pentium D will do just fine. But... These are about as useless as Pentium 4s these days because of their heat output, their power consumption, and their just general uselessness, basically. Especially this Pentium D system over here on the left, it really has a lot of crippling factors to it. Now, well, yeah, the Pentium D960 in the case of this GX620, yeah, you can still run Windows 10 64-bit on it just fine. You know, you're limited by the Intel 945 chipset being capped at 3.5 gigs of RAM, despite being 64-bit. And on top of that, again, 
the CPU is the bottleneck, and it will basically run at 100% usage all the time, which means that it's a very loud system. And again, you know, you're limited in the performance just based on everything about the system alone, and it's not really expandable either because you can't throw a Core 2 Duo in these things. You know, the Pentium Ds are the newest and the best CPUs that a GX620 can run. It's pretty sad because even though these are Socket 775 computers, they're just crippled by their chipsets and motherboards and their form factors. So these systems are just as useless as Pentium 4s these days. And really, again, I would not recommend a Pentium D. I'd get a Core 2 Duo any day of the week over a Pentium D just because it's just so much more efficient. And even this is what's sad. In the case of the Pentium D805, a more modern Celeron dual core, even from the same Socket 775 era, is faster than this. And then you know your system is a pile of crap when a Celeron beats you. So that's ouch. So anyways, um, hopefully this video is entertaining enough. I know it was kind of a bit off the cuff, a bit weird, a little bit boring, but I needed to get this done because, you know, these systems have been lingering around for long enough. And we've made memes about Pentium Ds for long enough that I figured, hey, what the heck, we'll get this out of the way. So I know this is kind of a bit, you know, again, off the cuff, bit weird, a little bit not necessary, but here we are. So if you liked it, well, there's a thumbs up button. If you didn't like it so much, well, there's a thumbs down button. You can also click that as well. If you want to see more content that's more interesting than this, there's a subscribe button down below. That's bright red. Click on it, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. And until the next video, well, thank you all for watching and take care.